Today, we are going to be practicing and trying out and testing a new technique that I've actually known about for quite a while now. This is going to be painting furniture to turn it into basically a faux leather, which I think is such a crazy idea. I remember Danny from DIY Danny posting a video on this probably about a year ago, I would say. I commented on the video. I was like, this is the most craziest thing I've ever seen. I didn't even know this was possible. And ever since that video came out, it has been in my head as something I've wanted to try out. Our first task today is to just go out and locate a chair. I don't exactly know what kind of chair I'm looking for, but let's go out to the thrift stores. I'm gonna head to one close by first. It's the Habitat for Humanity thrift store. And if they don't have anything there, um, because sometimes it's a hit or miss, I'm gonna head to one in downtown that has quite a bit of furniture, so. what I ended up getting. Sorry about the poor lighting here. I'll try to make this really quick just to go over our supplies, tools, and materials. The first thing I got, of course, was the paint. Now, Emma ended up using um, all just sample sizes of paint, so I went ahead and got the samples as well. Way cheaper than having to get the quart. So it's kind of going from light to dark there, and I'll make sure to pop up the color swatches for you guys too. I also ended up picking up some fabric softener, which they have this at Lowe's as well. Not sure if you guys knew, but I didn't. They have fabric softener there, so I got that. Here is a spray bottle. I got this as well. We're gonna need that for a process. And last but not least, a whole bunch of brushes. So I ended up getting these ones here, which were the really affordable brushes. They're just these two inch, like simple brushes. You could probably get these at the dollar store as well. And then I also got a couple of these brushes here, which I'm not sure the actual name of these. They're the more denser kind of like packer brush style, a bit more dense, but I thought this would be nice to be able to maybe add some more of a distressed texture to the leather. So I got quite a few of these as well, just to play around with. But let me go ahead and actually start working on the swatches, which I'll share with you guys what those are because I want those to dry overnight so we can see how they look in the morning. Now I decided to go ahead and create my very own swatches just because I know that the paint that she used was a different brand and I had no idea if the paint brand could totally change up the mixture um, and just kind of create a different consistency. So I went ahead, I got three pieces of canvas and I mixed out different proportions of paint and fabric softener together. So I did a half and half mixture where it's half paint, half fabric softener. I did one with two thirds paint and I also did one with three quarters paint. So this first one here is a half and half mixture with equal parts of paint and fabric softener. As you can see, it's pretty thick and consistent consistency and I'm going to paint that onto my canvas material. My next one here has two spoons of paint and one spoon of fabric softener which is actually the mixture that Emma ended up using and then I also went ahead and did a three-quarter mixture which I kind of figured this was out of the books anyways but I wanted to create it just to test it out. Good morning, you guys. I just woke up. I ran into the studio room because I was like, I need to check on these swatches. So this is kind of like my first look at these swatches. Okay, this is actually super interesting. Now this is of course just with one coat. So do keep in mind if you had a coarser fabric, it would probably get a little bit less coarse as you added more coats to it. But the three quarter paint, this is 1000% the roughest finish for sure. Now I know that Emma ended up using the two thirds, but I'm kind of torn between either of these and something else 
else, you guys, I noticed as well is the paint did not dry down, which I thought was weird. I literally left it here just because I ran out the door last night after filming these swatches to go to a dinner. But as you can see, the paint did not dry down at all in any of these. It's so smooth. Let's do like a little scratch test and see if anything comes off. Okay, there's literally nothing on my nail at all, and it did kind of mar the surface, but honestly, if you were to do that with real leather, it would do the same exact thing. So I think I'm gonna work on the half and half mixture. It is time to start the process. I have moved the chair from my car into the living room. I put this drop cloth underneath. I normally hate these plastic drop cloths, but I had it from a paint kit, so I just decided to use it as opposed to go out and getting another fabric one, my other fabric one. Got so much paint on it, I had to throw it out. So let's create some of the paint. I'm gonna do a couple of different colors. As you guys saw earlier, I opted for the half and half mixture. I wanted to share with you the consistency change. So this is the paint just right out of the can. Now this is mixed up with the fabric softener. You can see how much it truly thickens it up, which is so strange because they're both very runny consistencies. So some form of reaction definitely has to occur in there. This is all three shades mixed up. And then we're also going to create a little spray bottle with equal parts of water and fabric softener. This is just going to kind of be a mixing medium when we're painting our chair. I grabbed a little bit of frog tape because I'm gonna go in now and actually tape off the legs. That way we could start painting the chair base and allow it to dry because it's gonna need a couple of coats. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab our little mixture of the fabric softener and the water and I'm just gonna spritz this a little bit. And we're gonna start in with our paint. It is so thick, which is so strange, but let's, I guess, apply it. Oh, that is, oh my gosh, that's, guys, look how smooth this is. It looks like I'm literally applying this onto paper. Wait, what the heck? Emma did say that the smoother fabric that you had, the better that the coat would go on. Um, and this is actually spreading really nice as well. So this first little layer here literally took me one minute to apply and it is pretty smooth. I'm gonna go in with my second color here, which is a little bit darker, of course. And I'm gonna just kind of start seeing if I can blend a little bit of this in to the side. So I'm just gonna stipple it around to start, um, just to kind of get it moving. I'm gonna blend this kind of like you're just, you know, painting a picture, adding shadows where it should be darker, which is more so in these creases. And then the highlighted sections are gonna be the more open sections. So more like the back here and then the um, middle of the chair. Here I am going in with the darkest shade of paint. Now, something I can tell you guys and give you like a little idea of what this feels like when you're painting is it almost feels like an oil paint where the paint really stays wet on the surface. It allows you to blend very easily, allows you to go back and make corrections if you need to. It doesn't dry down very quick like an acrylic. So all around, I feel like the process is really forgiving. You can go back and add different shades if you need to. You can lighten up sections, darken up sections. When painting my chair, I also kind of broke it up into sections. So I started off with the seat first and I did that section first, then I'm doing the seat back and then I'm gonna be doing the back side of the chair right after that. And I just found this makes it the easiest to blend. It lets the paint sit on the surface. It stays wettest the longest. And overall, I just found it to be so much easier. I could definitely see if you were to go in with your lightest color first and paint the entire chair, maybe by the time you reach the back, it could be dried down just a little bit. Again, it does take quite a while to dry, but working in smaller sections like this just over Overall made it a little bit easier.
I went ahead, I applied the first coat of paint. Now I'm gonna flip the camera around and share with you guys what it is looking like at the moment and my takeaways so far of the process. You cannot tell me this does not look like leather, you guys. This is crazy so far. It's been such a fun process actually because it went on so smoothly. Now, a couple of things to mention. You can still see the pattern through, of course. The pattern is still poking through a little bit. That's just because this is the first coat. Now, originally on my first coat, I was just gonna do one coat of the lightest shade and then kind of go in with the second and third and then do like kind of, you know, some shadows here and there. But I actually opted to go in and while it was still wet on my first coat, I just did a little bit of shading around the seat here. I did it around the back as well with some of our darker shades and a couple of takeaways for you. So as you can see, the first coat um, didn't cover the pattern fully, which is no worry. And the second thing is that it is still extremely wet. Even in the first section I painted right here, it's still very wet. I'm assuming that it's just gonna sit on top of the surface until it dries. But tomorrow we're gonna do our second coat. We're gonna deepen up all of the areas. Um, we're also gonna alter the legs a little bit and keep on working with this leather process. Hi everyone, it is the next morning and I allowed the chair to dry overnight. Now for multiple hours, I was kind of checking on it every couple of hours. By about the third or fourth hour, I could tell that it started to become a little bit tacky and then by like the sixth hour, I could tell that a majority of like the layers were dry but some of the creases were still a little bit wet. So this is what the chair looks like so far. The color is beautiful. I absolutely love this like warm caramel color. Uh, something that I did notice though is that the color went on a lot more opaque but as you can see, it almost looks looks suede but that is because the pattern is actually showing through. It kind of got a little bit more sheer and transparent in some sections. It seems like these edging areas here are super saturated and dark because I added a couple layers there. If you guys can hear that, I don't know if that helps you with an idea of what it feels like, but it does not feel crunchy at all. It is really, really soft. It's almost like we dyed it in a sense. And of course there's zero transfer on the hands, which is great. So I'm gonna go through, we're gonna apply our second coat today. I'm hoping the second coat will be able to cover a majority of the remaining pattern on here, but this is looking so good so far, which I am so excited about. This is such a fun technique. We're gonna apply our second coat right now, so let's go. Actually, before we apply the second coat, I wanna do a quick sit test. I just wanna sit on it and see, you know, what it feels like, get my thoughts on it. Oh, I mean, it just feels like a normal chair. There's no cracking or anything um, on the fabric, which normally would happen with paint on fabric. It would typically crack, but I guess the latex mixed with the fabric softener. <laughs> On it now I am just obsessed with how the coating is covering so far I do feel like you could see just a tiny 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 bit of the pattern through mainly just like the edges of the pattern but I honestly am going to keep it I think that it adds character to the chair I like the different colorations here it looks worn in and like a used piece of leather so I actually really enjoy that now the seat itself like I 
just think this looks absolutely incredible. I don't know what else I would change about this. Um, I think it looks really nice. Now, I do want to point out a couple of sections that I did kind of like mess up on, for example. As you can see right here, I have some dark paint strokes, which I kind of want to go in and see if I could fix those a little bit, blend these edges. This right here isn't super blended as well. And then also right on the edge here, I don't know what I was thinking when I did this, but I want to go in and kind of try to fix that as well. So I'm really happy with the coloration and the two coats really just work for this chair. So I'm going to go in and just tweak a little bit on it. Um, I still need to, of course, do the legs as well, but I want to do the chair. was fully dry. 